Sadly, we are watching the swift decline of the United States and the US dollar happening right in front of us in real time. This is bad. This week, we got the clearest sign yet that America's Middle East policy has failed, and Putin and China now have a massive upper hand. So what's actually happening to the United States is actually worse than we thought, because if the Earth is a giant geopolitical chessboard, China and Russia just put the United States in check. Or maybe a better analogy actually for the United States right now, like it's like they're rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, and it's not going to stop what's coming. We have three major pieces of news that the mainstream media is ignoring this week, and they're actively trying to distract you from what's really going on. Once again, they're doing this. They want Joe Biden reelected, so they're not going to tell you the truth. Now, I'm going to get to these bombshell stories in a minute, but first, China. You can't even make this up. China just announced the building of a brand new military base, not in the South China Sea, not in Vietnam, not in East Asia somewhere. No, China is building a new military base in Cuba, in our own backyard. Poke the Chinese dragon, and this is what happens. The United States has more than 750 military bases around the world, and they're building three new ones in China's backyard. China announcing that they're teaming up with the, the highly sanctioned Cuba. I was going to say very sanctioned. No, highly sanctioned Cuba to build a base that they admit will be used to spy on American shipping and naval traffic. The Chinese are admitting openly, we're building a base to spy on you, and we're going to do it in your backyard. The Chinese dragon is moving west, and we cannot stop it. Now, you'll recall that the United States invoked what's known as the Monroe Doctrine to force the Soviet Union to remove missiles from Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The United States claims that a document written by a U.S. President James Monroe in the year 1823 somehow would keep foreign powers from setting up camp in the Western Hemisphere. We actually believe this. We, we say it publicly. It was meant to keep Europe from meddling in Puerto Rico or Cuba or Mexico. So will sleepy Joe Biden invoke the Monroe Doctrine once again, telling China, hey, see this document here written by our president in 1823 means you can't build a military base in our backyard. Will China give a crap? Just look at the amount of U.S. military bases surrounding China right now. Shit is about to get real between the United States and China. And that's not even the biggest news of the week. America's Middle East policy of death by sanctions has failed. In Iran and Syria, for starters, America's plan was to, of course, destabilize the Middle East by sanctioning those countries into utter poverty, create so much pain and discontent that the people of Iran or Syria or Libya would rise up, overthrow their governments, and the U.S. would install a puppet regime that we would then control. That's how it usually always works for the United States. Well, it has failed officially this week. Iran, now just days away from becoming a world superpower, a nuclear power. A top U.S. official has claimed that Iran has enough fissile material to build a nuclear weapon in about 12 days. Two of them, in fact. Iran will have a nuclear weapon in 30 days. Let that sink in for a moment. So will the United States and Israel invade? They can't. It's game over. This is checkmate. Remember when Obama launched the largest cyber attack on a foreign country in Iran? Launched the Stuxnet virus in order to destroy their nuclear enrichment program. Then the virus got out. Crippled computers around the world. Yeah, it leaked out. Yeah, it didn't work out so well. All the sanctions, all the cyber attacks, and the lies about Iran, the United States Middle East policy has failed. And China and Russia now have Iran's back. So does Saudi Arabia, who used to ignore Iran, treated them as an enemy because the United States wanted them to. No more. Saudi Arabia has shaken hands with Iran, kicked out the United States. But it gets worse than that this week. European leaders that are in bed with the United States and NATO are losing elections, and they're losing them big. Pedro Sanchez in Spain, aligned with NATO and the World Economic Forum, just got destroyed in local and regional elections. But Erdogan in Turkey, he actually won re-election for telling the Turkish people that he won't take IMF loans, won't take money from the Western governments, aligning Turkey with Russia and China, rejecting the United States. And he won his election. The United States meddling in Turkey failed. What used to work for the United States is now failing over and over again. Using the United States dollar as a cudgel is failing. And now these countries have alternatives, a BRICS currency 
backed by commodities like gold and silver and oil. This week, we saw a new record amount of central banks swallowing up gold, buying as much precious metals as they can. Central banks continue to buy gold. Any insights you can add here and what you're hearing and seeing, Mark? The central banks, to their credit, have probably been the most consistent bullish segment of the precious metal space you know, for, right. for the last three or four years, really since the outbreak of COVID. And you've said it before, and I love it when you say this because you're so right, is they must know something. They're doing this for a reason. Month after month, quarter after quarter, these central banks are buying up gold. Countries are now scrambling to ditch the U.S. dollar at the fastest pace in the U.S. dollar's history. Get this, last week, more than 30 more countries announced that they want to move away from the United States dollar and join the BRICS nations. Of course, BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, but that list is now massive and continues to grow. They're going to have to change the name of BRICS to something much, much longer, which I can't think of what that initialism might look like, but it'll be long. And then if you needed any more evidence, the United States policy in the Middle East has failed. Look what happened in Syria this week. The Arab League invited Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, to join them. The pariah, the outcast, the man the United States claims is a dictator that gasses his own people. Of course, that's all been debunked. Putin has wrapped his arms around Syria, telling the West, we've got their back step back from Syria. The Arab League admitted that Assad survived everything the United States threw at them. Fake chemical gas attack propaganda news, debunked. Assassination attempts by the United States, fake news, social media attacks, cyber attacks, Obama's drone strikes, devastating sanctions, and not to mention a massive earthquake, which just struck in the past few months. Assad survived all of it. And the people of Syria support Assad, despite what Western media is telling you. Assad regularly walks down the street among the people with no security, and he does this regularly with his wife. The Middle East policies of isolation, sanctions, and destruction have not worked. Iraq, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Iran, hoarding gold and silver, ditching the U.S. dollar, making massive new belt and road construction deals with China signing oil and gas deals with Russia. This is truly rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic for the United States. That's the news update part of this video. Now here's the sponsor for today's video. It's Tier 1 Silver. Now this has become my biggest silver position of 2023, and I'm actively buying shares of this company right now because of what I'm about to show you and what's happening for the demand for gold and silver right now, which is off the charts. Now, guys, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to buy this stock. I didn't until now because we just bounced off of a rock bottom low. This thing went way down. Then it hit bottom. And guess what? Started to rally down 85 percent and then started going up 5 percent. Boom. That's when I'm jumping in. This stock is down right now over 80% since they IPO'd. So that's just one reason. Now it's starting to rally. Look at this. It hit a bottom and the rally is starting. We've been watching this company for a long time, ever since their IPO. And now I'm ready to tell you about why I'm buying this company. A couple of big reasons. First, the chairman of the company is a legend in the mining world, Mr. Ivan Bibik. Now, you probably know him. If you've been following these types of companies, you know who he is. His mining success is second to none. If you know anything about him, you'll already know his track record. But if you don't, here's a little refresher. One of Ivan Bibik's previous companies, Keegan Resources, a gold mining company, saw their stock price skyrocket from $0.49 cents to $9.10. That's an 18x return for shareholders. So if you'd put $10,000 into that, into that company, you would have made $180,000, just for a frame of reference. And then he and the team did it again with another company called Caden Resources. Now, their mineral discovery team is amazing. So what they did is they struck gold after monetizing 100 different drill holes looking for gold. That stock went from $0.67 cents a share to $3.38 a share, a 500% increase. Then they sold that company to one of the largest gold companies in the world for a huge exit. You see the pattern here? Build a world-class discovery team, find gold and silver, and then sell the company for a huge exit. Rinse and repeat. And here they are again. This team knows how to sell these companies, how to build these companies so that shareholders make a lot of money. 
and they're sitting on a mountain of potential high-grade silver as they're about to start drilling on their land in Peru. So you can see why I'm buying shares right now. That's my exit plan. If they sell this company, shareholders make a lot of money. Remember, I always try to show you these companies before they start drilling because that's how we can make a lot of money. Normally, when a company announces drilling results, that's when the stock explodes. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen here. No one knows. No one has a crystal ball. But the upside potential is huge. So if their current share price is 25 cents a share and they announce that they just struck a huge silver vein of high grade silver, what do you think is going to happen to that share price? Again, we don't know. No one has a crystal ball. But this is why I like to invest before they announce drilling results. Another reason I'm buying shares of this company right now is what they just discovered on this silver land in Peru. Now, remember, they are called Tier 1 Silver. It's the name of their company. But they brought in a world-class third-party consultant team to walk the land and take samples before they start drilling. That's what really smart mining companies do. They say, hey, we've been studying this land for so long, right? But we want to bring in a third party, someone who's dispassionate, who's going to analyze the land. Did we miss anything? Did we overlook anything? Are there any blind spots that we need to be aware of on the land? And what these consultants came back with is astonishing. The third party consultant said, not only are you sitting on what we think is high grade silver deposits, but our testing shows that you're sitting on a potential huge deposit of pore free copper as well. Now, a pore free deposit, if you've never heard that term before, but if you're in the mining world, you know what that means. A pore free deposit means a massive deposit of copper. So a world-class silver mine and a world-class copper mine was just a bonus on top of it. So that's like buying a Lamborghini and then finding out inside of the Lamborghini, there's also a Ferrari sitting in there as a bonus. Here's the CEO of Tier 1 Silver, Peter Dembecki, talking about this copper discovery at their Curabaya mine location in Peru. Listen. Curabaya, it is there for us. Uh, it has the richest endowment of precious metals grades on surface, near surface, in channel sampling that we know of uh, in the world. Uh, and to have this copper porphyry story come to life uh, and is getting more real by the day. So imagine you're the CEO of a silver company that's about to start drilling and you find out that you've also got a huge deposit of copper. That's insane. So guys, hopefully you can see why I'm so bullish on this company. This stock is down almost 80%. It just hit bottom a few weeks ago and now it's starting to rally. So they get ready to drill on these locations. The stock is trading right now at this recording at 25 cents a share. I'm holding this stock until a potential exit. I bought it. I'm holding it. I'm hoping that they'll sell the company for huge profits down the line in a year, two years from now, whatever the case may be. Remember, this mine is surrounded by the biggest silver and copper companies in the world. One of these big companies will gobble them up if history is in any indication Again, I'm not saying that's going to happen. No, no one knows if that's going to happen. But when you are a massive silver company and the little guy next to you discovers a massive amount of silver, you, you like to swallow them up. That's how it usually goes. That's how history has taught us. And history is our biggest teacher in these situations. Here is their stock ticker on your screen. TSLVF. It's trading at 25 cents a share. It's down 80% from its high. It rallied 5% over the past few weeks. They are about to drill for silver, so I can't wait to see what these drilling results look like, and I can't wait to see where this stock price goes next. Guys, as always, thank you for your amazing emails. I love seeing how you guys make great money on some of these companies that we share with you, but you're the one taking action, not me. You're the one who's out there doing your own due diligence, confirming what I'm showing you right here. You can go, it's all public. You can all go and look at these details of their drilling results and their plans for drilling and what they just discovered with this copper uh, discovery as well. It's all right there. You can go and look at it. I'll have links to Tier 1 Silver's website in the description below, as well as their stock ticker, so you can see what I see. So guys, until next time, have a great one. We'll see you in the next video.